<laughs> yeah, I just need a minute after that. Asshole. All right. I couldn't find the kid. Uh, I don't know what he looks like. He's honest. probably in the vents. You got to look in the vents. You probably snuck right. out behind the show, PD. <laughs> this small guy can weasel his way around. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing out of that. I'm going to give me jack shit. Yeah. Yeah. What was the point of that entire thing? Uh, to ask him what was he doing, because when I got there, so so we believe that Chang is behind the kidnapping of Clear Cloak and bring her to the lighthouse. When I got when I respond to the call of an injured person, when I got there, Rami was walking away from the lighthouse by the it's bridge. Like recently? Two days ago. Oh. So I asked him what he's doing. He's just uh, I'm just he's walking around. Um, you know, I go to investigate the 47 and boom, we find a body. I turn around and Rami and Omar are gone by the time I find the body, right? So I asked officers to canvas the area, investigate, and try to find them. They were never able to locate him, but during the pursuit, they called out that somebody looked like Rami resisting and running to an Asa. They fled the scene from uh, <clears throat> the grape seed. The problem is we weren't able to identify anybody except Rami. Yeah. However, I do have a witness who can identify Rami being there, but they don't want to testify. There's, they don't Ooh, want to talk to us. Ooh, yeah. And that's, that's why I can't proceed. That's why I've hit a wall. I can't even do a lineup. Like, I want to I have Rami down here doing a lineup and have the person pick him out, and then boom. I can prove that person seeing him at the, at the hospital when they call the police. This is a kidnapping. And then taking Cleo Wait, to this, the lighthouse. Wait, is this and all related with garbage? Correct. What the actual fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... So, um, <laughs> this is all involved materials, and, um, all Rami does is conveniently put the blame on Lang and Luci Luciano DiCenzo and the sanitation guys. And the sanitation guys are telling me that the people who are hurting them, attacking them, are chain gang because yeah. of what? Material prices. Six materials are die. That's what being told, basically, right? So they're being extorted, or they're being told that, hey, you gotta sell this at a certain price or you're gonna die. And they're using force. Jesus fucking Christ. See, this is why, I, hate, is, this is why I deal with serial killers. They're uh, a little bit more straightforward. Um, I'm also working <laughs> on homicide. Give Chatterbox. Chatterbox is going in for uh, manslaughter or murder, depending on what he does. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so um, I just wanted Rami's alibi. I wanted to see what he had to say. I'm going to go talk to those other guys and see what's going on. And I'm probably going to charge him with kidnapping and attempted murder. If Cleo, or sorry, Cloak is willing to uh, testify. I told you, Chad. And the person I called it. what happened to kidnapping. If they're not willing to testify, I can't charge him. There's not much you could do about that, right? And I'm trying to build an ego act uh, behind what's going on because there's been a lot of targeting, right? There's been a lot of targeted violence towards sanitation because of what's been going on recently. Polyfuse, thank you for the eight months. Well... Um, I don't know if I should talk to you about this. I was going to talk to Ruby, uh, just directly. Um, some X, some X. I was going to follow the chain of command. Are you ready for this? What I'm about to say. Go ahead. I don't know if you need a minute to like process the other stuff. No, I should. I just uh, remove my symbol. Um, so look, I would follow the chain of command, but it's getting so fucking ridiculous. I just genuinely, uh, don't trust it going anywhere. Every time I get on duty slacks, I, I, I'm genuinely getting frustrated. Um, like, really, really frustrated. Um, every time I come on duty, the radio is silent. And I feel like I generate a call. <clears throat> like the one I did with Chris, where, you know, there's jack shit going on. So I fake a phone call to Chris. Uh, small warrant. It's like joyriding or something like that. Uh, convince him I want to buy materials. I go over there. You know, light little warrant search. And then it feels like we've got nine officers attached. Now, yeah, what the fuck happened with that? Because um... I was just so genuinely triggered. And I'm going to try to explain the reason why. Right? A backup is always appreciated, right? Um, But... Uh, and, and I don't want to hyper-focus on this particular call because 
I can swear to you, it happens every time I'm on duty. I believe um, you. I believe you. I think people are just not paying attention. There's no self awareness. No, it, 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 it's it's worse than that. It's literal. I, I'm trying to choose my words carefully and try to be as professional as possible. Um, it's incompetence, uh, at minimum, uh, because the uh, unless things have changed, a call is generated. You should announce yourself to the call and provide ample time for the individual who's generated that call to let you know if they've got enough units or not, right? Um, however, there's so much pick-me syndrome and so much um, like, yo, let me join the chase. That sounds cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like people jump yeah. onto the call. And, well, because and the people problem don't have is, directions on patrol, right? They don't know what they're doing. And they're using the response to calls as a crutch to respond to things, right? Yeah, that, they're not realizing that. Hey, you know, um, like you said, there's a, there's an appropriate way to respond to call. Announce yourself, yeah. attach yourself to the call. If there's too many, pull back out. It should be four units. Yes, absolutely. What was you wanted for? Was it anything About, violent? It was literally reckless evading joyriding. Like it was so light. Like you know, I didn't even like really sweat too much. Like trying to get him. Like you know, should I mean? be. It should be four I, units. I chased That's him it. by right. myself. I already had two units, right? And and by the time. I got back to my car and the chase happened. I thought I was like seeing things because I saw seven to eight blips moving. Now, one of them was moving in a separate pack and I was like, oh, okay, they're in a different call. I'm just mis like interpreting what I'm on. And then it turns out there was seven to eight units. And now I would then, it, it, it put me in such an awkward position because look, I'm glad we got Rami, right? Oh, oh, sorry. I don't um, you got Rami? Yep. Yeah, we did. We did. We just got him sent off. Uh, well, so, so, it's done. Uh, we actually so, we actually need to talk about this. Actually, if, um, I don't know if there's hold on. Is there bones around? I think I think we should talk to Bones about this. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Okay. We can bring up to Bones. So, Jen, did he? <clears throat> yeah. Just to finish the thought, I, I you know I'm I'm glad we got Rami right, but the manner by which that happened just made it just a very unenjoyable call because it was such an extreme amount of units to the extent that it was just like, go, 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 get at all cost. And we didn't know that was Rami, right? We we're chasing someone that just did joyriding and reckless evading. And, and, and the problem is for myself, uh, the individual who generated that call originally on Chris, I have no way to reconcile the situation once the seven or eight are already on there, uh, outside of perhaps, and I and, and I don't do this, get on the radio and start screaming. You know what I mean? Um, to get the message across. Because the moment there's seven to eight cops on on, on on a small call, like you know, how do you, how do you, how does that get corrected? I am so um, sorry. I, I, I feel like the responsibility needs to be on the individual doing the attach. And recognizing that they, that the call may be oversubscribed. You know what I mean? Are we talking about the, the King one, Chris King? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting because there were several interfering vehicles when I was on the situation, but then they all peeled off. And, and once we had two people in custody, uh, for some reason, I felt that, that, uh, those people. I felt that some cops disappeared and then they showed back up. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. It's like, done. There's no communication. Yeah. No falling back. Hey, even three one it. The simple through it. Hey, I, I'm going back to channel one. I do it all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. people don't pay attention to radio because they, they sometimes are they're on low space or bubble or they're not paying attention to radio because there's so much going on in front of them or behind them. Yeah. It's uh or beside them. Th this is what I wanted to bring up with you, Ruby, is uh I was going to follow the chain of command, but it, it's been happening so much and I have brought it up to others, but I, I just haven't seen any movement and it wasn't, I didn't want to hyper focus on this incident with Chris, uh, given the fact that it's almost every time I'm on duty, uh, I'm witnessing a rather small incident. That's a chase have a ballooning of units attached to it unannounced. And the moment we have individuals in custody, everyone's gone. So now it's right. like, who even was there? 
Like, why did the units attach? Like, and this is going to sound like, I, I don't want to be nasty about it, but it feels like people are just joining to join the fun chase. And you know what I mean? And it, it causes a headache for the person who generated the call because we're the ones who just, you know, we're the ones who have to deal with the, the brunt of it. Um, I would have to say that I have uh, encountered quite a few issues, but I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna encompass something else as well. Uh, I would say for the last two to three nights we've had no dispatch, uh, and it is desperately needed when we have this. We've got officers, you know, that leave everything on channel one because we don't have always have time to swap to another channel. So that's mm. one issue that I have noticed. Uh, the second issue is that, um, uh, oh, hey, we Chief. We the prom slacks. Is this still happening? Yeah, in like 15 it's minutes. It's in 15 minutes. Ugh, prom. Uh, probably not. We're low on units. I'm going to on duty. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay clocked in, but in, uh, just in case something pops off. And uh, I'm going to invest in my car. It shouldn't require oh, God, dispatch. It's I'm glad we're Sorry. having this conversation. Sorry, Chad, this is I, this is why I felt bad. Like He'll probably call you next. <clears throat> um, I, all I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from, Brian, but I also feel that there are a multitude of issues that we're faced with right now. Mm. Uh, shift, shift one, I've been here too long today, and shift one, again, no dispatch. And I thought we were hiring extra dispatch. I thought we were getting onto the uh, – and dispatch is very important. Uh, and number two, I agree. People see a chase and they're like, whoopee, I'm going to join it. And yes, yeah. sometimes we do need uh, additional 77s. But I find that as soon as someone's in cuffs, they, they just bugger off and I don't know where they've yeah. gone. And sometimes I'm left holding a, a person yeah. that I, like today, I literally had to turn to an officer and I said, you tackled him and cuffed him. He's yours, not mine. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, 100%. Just, and imagine Ruby that like like uh, who the, there's a, like maybe who of the units that and I don't want to hype once again hyper focus on this incident because it keeps happening like it's it's happened every time I've been on duty um is like those officers that do leave do they even know why they were what the chase was about what if it was violent right what if those two individuals we now got in cuffs were about to get rolled up on and shot up um it, it's it's kind of like did a, that happen did the the suspect get taken uh no not not in this case but i'm saying like okay that that's like the side oh, effect yeah. right like two officers yeah. like you know it's like the okay there was like eight cops on scene and then all of a sudden you know we've got three in custody and now it's like ems and you know two or three cops and only two suspects like at any moment someone mm -hmm. can roll through and just like glassed um i don't know um it, to me mm -hmm. i, I be feel you? on a on a per officer basis what i thought was very helpful in the past was um each and every officer is responsible to say you know do you need an additional unit or you know 190 195 attaching it gives ample time for whoever is managing that call to you know, say we have enough units, right? Um, but when it's done like silently, it's, mm -hmm. there's no way to know. Or, and then when they detach, hey, do you have, you guys good here? Can I break off? Yeah, you can, or no, can you stick around? Boom, boom, you know? And, and I feel like just that one little change just pays dividends. The, the, I'm gonna be honest, this is always gonna be an issue in the PD. You need to have the active leadership on pursuits saying, hey, knock it off. Get the fuck out of the pursuit. Who's a senior plus or an officer stepping up to do the right thing, right? To, to actually do the proper scene control, scene lead, tell people what to do, delegate, things like that. If that's done often, then people know exactly what the role model is. And they know, okay, that's the recipe right there. That's what we're supposed to do. Unfortunately, that was a part a of the pursuit. It for me. Yeah, exactly, right? So I, I wish I was there to help out. I, I was doing it's sanitation not, undercover, no. right? And then mm -hmm. I heard about it afterwards. Oh, how did that go? Did you find anything? No, uh, we were doing it for half an hour, and then we got pull I got pulled back over here for Rami. All right. 
Um, I'm going to try what I can, at least on the calls I generate, to try to be a bit more vocal and, and break it off. I, I just, in this case, I was just so flustered. I was, I, I didn't know what to do. Like, how did we triple in you? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where people got to call it out. Hey, what the hell? Um, I blip watch like a mother trucker all the time. Always. You have to. Yeah. I'm pulling back on it. Um, all right. Okay. Easy. <sighs> All right. Well, I'm going to go serve some more warrants. Um, all right. Hell all right. yeah. Uh, do you know where the officers are involved in that pursuit, though, Brian? So we can have a discussion about it. I think we should have a debrief, honestly. Um, I, I think we should talk about what's going on. And I It was like uh, me, Suarez, Frost, and uh, I don't know what his name is. He kind of sounds like Bison. I'm back. Oh, wait, you don't know him. Kirby, there, there's oh, a... I do, I do, I do, I do. Decker, Decker, yeah, I've done, done plenty of good work. Oh, with you've him. met He's Bison before? Not Bison, sorry, a Decker. Oh, wait, how do you know he sounds like Bison then? No, I thought you were talking about Decker, who was involved in that pursuit. No, no. Um. Uh, they, I, I can uh... only name the three that were on scene at the end. Uh, I, I genuinely don't know who else was on that call. Mm, Brian, no... uh, it's either Ventura or uh, Jackson. Ventura Jackson. or Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> I think Jumbo had popped off by then. I, I, bro, I, 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 uh, and then um, I need to talk to Hawk because he hasn't finished. Um, I don't know where he's at with the uh, Cornwood stabbing. Oh, so um, that, uh... oh, let me get up to you on that. So I filed the subpoena for it. The chief signed it three okay. days ago, but it was so never just waiting. Nobody notified the DOJ though. You know how like when you sign it, you're supposed to at the judge. I did right. that yesterday, and okay, they haven't responded back to me, so I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, all right. Oh, uh... I, I just want to make sure we're not running out of time. Oh, we are. I think we only got like a week and a half left, I believe. Or I could be wrong. Maybe two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is what happened today as Cornwood received a call uh, from a Miss Tessa Lamb. I think there's a report. No, Rami. Is yeah, well. I saw a report about this last night. Yeah. Who else can I hunt down? Miguel's not going to be around in a minute. Yeah, so uh, I gotta I'm ask assuming him. a report forty three sixty. Laundromat. Wait, hold on. Let me click this. Do you think that if I told them where it is, they would care about you? And then this is, is my two weeks' notice. That's what I. I don't know. I need to talk to Hawk and uh, and Declan. I'm assuming two weeks notice, maybe till until the statute of limitation. Possibly. Mm -hmm. You turn or in all different color to USBs, to get it to somebody. Oh my you receive something like upward ladder in a sense, a robbery. I see. Okay. Okay. Jesus. Yeah. All so right. I mean, we'll uh, keep an eye. This is not how they. Yeah, I'm gonna go out there and see what's going on. Help out. Um, I, I one more question. Um, I got a yeah. confession on. Uh, USB dongles for uh, the laundromat. Um, oh, perfect. We have a master document for that. We're working on that. I spoke with Avery and Suarez about this. Okay. I need you to go to, uh, I think it should be called Master USB. Um, So what what is the process for this? Do I go to the individual or do I just update the uh, dossier? I update the PD dossier for master document of USB software because we're trying to figure out how they're all connected. And I also mm -hmm. told uh, Suarez and Avery to talk to Nakota to try to push for these to be C's, mark procedure, because mm -hmm. we have a link now that we can prove between the pattern and how they're being used and how they're being obtained during the robberies they're doing. So oh, we're this trying is a couple to provide days a city council to say, okay, this is something that they're using in the commission of a crime, or this is a tool that can aid them in their criminal activity.
Easy. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ash Sheath, is there anything you need for me? <sighs> uh, when you're role playing, wait, hold on. Just make sure I have the razor. Um, bleh. I need food. Let me go upstairs. Uh, <clears throat> how do you play it out with Udding? Uh, well, I've been role playing for a long time, so separating characters is pretty easy for me because I don't really give a shit about my characters. It, it's actually very, it's not very difficult. Uh, just ask yourself, how did I learn this information? And if you cannot answer that question, then assume that the information you have is meta. It's really that easy.